We love the Volkswagen Atlas. We named it our favorite car of 2018, and even this year continues to get accolades as we named it our best family car of 2020. It's one of our favorite people movers. But what if you don't need to move as many people? Well, Volkswagen has an answer for that, the two-row Volkswagen Atlas Cross Sport. It gets rid of the third row and kind of shifts packaging around a little bit, gives it a little more stylish exterior, and it's the exterior dimensions and styling that is really what's going to sell you on this. And I can't tell you whether it looks good or bad. You're going to have to determine that for yourself because you really shouldn't trust my judgment. I currently have a 1977 Oldsmobile in my favorite car list on cars.com, so use your own judgment. The Atlas Cross Sport has a lower roof that dips down after the second row. And dimensionally, the two row SUV is five inches shorter bumper to bumper, and the roof is two inches lower than the three row Atlas. Other than simply how it looks, here's what that means. Because there's no third row, Volkswagen shifted the second row position all the way rearward compared with the Atlas three row sliding second row. While it looks like there's more legroom on paper, it's actually a fixed second row in the same spot that the three row sliding second row would go to in its maximum legroom position. The end result is you have similar amounts of space in the Atlas Cross Sport as you do in the large Atlas three row. The back seat is massive. If you're looking at this class of cars that includes the Ford Edge, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and Nissan Murano, then this is top of the heap as far as back seat room. You do lose some headroom because the roof is lower, but there is plenty of room to give, and it's really comfortable back there. The back seat doesn't slide anymore, but it does recline, and boy oh boy is it comfortable when that back seat is laid back. There's less cargo room than the three row Atlas, and on paper it looks like you're giving up a lot with 15 fewer cubic feet of cargo space behind the second row. That's the equivalent of losing the amount of space a Toyota Highlander has behind its third row. But here's why that doesn't matter. Even slicing off all of that room from a lower roof, shorter length, and new back seat position, the Atlas Crossport cargo room is still more than competitors. By our measurement and not the OEM specs, we measured more cubic feet of cargo space than a Honda Passport, Nissan Murano, Jeep Grand Cherokee, and Ford Edge. Because the major changes are in styling and packaging, there's actually not a whole lot different in how the Crossport drives which is good and bad. Good because the Atlas is already one of the most refined and athletic driving SUVs in this class. I drove the 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder with all wheel drive. And that's a new combination that you previously weren't able to get in the Atlas prior to 2021. 2020 model years and earlier, the Atlas four cylinder was only available with front wheel drive, which made it an extremely limited offering. I had never driven the four-cylinder Atlas before this, and my introduction starts with an embarrassing story. After I picked up the car, I got on the phone with Volkswagen for a quick presentation and told them that I had never driven the four-cylinder Atlas and I'd like to get one out to us for testing. And I'm the a-hole because I was driving the four-cylinder. But that's really a testament to how good Volkswagen's turbo four-cylinder is. This is a similar turbo two-liter that's in the Volkswagen Ardeon and Volkswagen Jetta GLI. It comes with similar caveats though. For example, you can run regular octane gasoline all day and if you look at the gas store, it's gonna say regular octane recommended. But you're not getting the advertised 235 horsepower and 258 pounds feet of torque on regular octane. Open the owner's manual and that's where you see that those power numbers are only made on premium gasoline and Volkswagen recommends premium gasoline for the maximum horsepower and torque. We asked Volkswagen how much power and torque you lose on regular octane, but Volkswagen wasn't able to provide an answer before we filmed this. I honestly question whether you need the six cylinder. Yes, you will if you plan to tow, because the 2.0 liter is only rated to tow 2,000 pounds, while the six cylinder is 5,000 pounds. That 5,000 pound capacity though, only if you have a trailer with trailer brakes and if you have the optional hitch. The four cylinders off the line grunt and low RPM torque make it perfectly adequate around town. The four cylinder is down 40 horsepower compared to the six cylinder, but torque is only down 10 pounds feet. 
and there's over 100 fewer pounds than the three row. So it moves pretty good. And if you wanted, the four cylinder actually drives well when you're driving for efficiency. The engine responds well to increasing miles per gallon. On our long-term Volkswagen Atlas six cylinder, there was not a wide range of fuel economy. No matter what you did, you couldn't coax much efficiency out of the six cylinder. After 12,000 miles, we averaged just 18 miles per gallon, which was near its combined rating, but there wasn't a whole lot of variance. The 2.0T is rated with slightly better mile per gallon than the six cylinder, and it's less expensive, but if you put the good stuff in the tank, then the cost evens out, and you eventually spend more on fuel than you would if you just paid for the V6 and put regular octane in it. The other thing to know about the Atlas Cross Sport is that yes, it has sport in its name, but the engine, transmission, suspension, the way it drives are just the same as the regular Atlas. So, which is not a bad thing, but for something with sport in its name, you're not gonna get any more sporting of an experience behind the wheel. Also not different enough is the interior, which is one of the main reasons why the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade recently took the win in our three row SUV comparison. And the interior on the Atlas Cross Sport is virtually identical, except for some new stitching and an optional dark red leather interior. You know, the Atlas Cross Sport is not just a utility player. That's why you buy a three row SUV. So I'd like to see a little more opulence from the interior quality especially because you can get near luxury interiors from competitors at similar pricing. Volkswagen is targeting small families and empty nesters who want something bigger than the Tiguan. Basically, if you don't need a third row, but you want an expansive back seat, then the Atlas Cross Sport is right up your alley. The Cross Sport SEL I tested was a reasonable $42,000 with destination, given how much room there is and how well the Atlas drives. It's about $1,000 less than a comparable 2021 Volkswagen Atlas three row. The Atlas Crossport has all the merits of the regular Atlas and some of its downsides, which may not translate well into the two row midsize class where buyers aren't laser focused on functionality. Even so, if you're considering a Ford Edge, Honda Passport, Jeep Grand Cherokee, or Nissan Murano, then the Atlas Crossport should be on your list too.